Hello and welcome. This is Lagos Parliament and I am Abimbola Agbibi. One of the issues that generated concerns at the close of plenary last year was untapped waterways in Lagos, which the lawmakers say is fast becoming a hideout for criminals and hoodlums in the state. A motion was moved by the Chairman House Committee on Waterfronts and Infrastructure to address the situation. Lagos, popularly known as a city of aquatic splendor, presently boasts of 10 lagoons, but concerns are growing over its potentials that have remained untapped for many years. Okay. Honorable colleague, good afternoon. The need to ensure development of tourism on waterfront in Lagos brought about a motion that was moved on the floor of the house on this day. This house notes that waterfront tourism development is crucial for the improving capacity of the state to generate more revenue by offering a variety of attractions like water sports, entertainment, arenas, parks, shopping malls, among others. A size exploring its potential is also the need to read the waterways of hoodlums. Mr. Speaker, I want to lend my voice to the uh, uh, mover of this motion in terms of our uh, honorable WAP. Lagos, as a peculiar state in Nigeria, is 3,577 square kilometers, and one third of that is water. That means the main say of our economy is supposed to be tourism, ideally. Today, he talked about going to Lekki, you are going to Ibeche, you are going to Ekpe, from Bariga to Idumata, from Bariga to Third Mainland Bridge, all those areas, be it Elijah, be it uh, Okobaba and the likes, they are high source. Those are supposed to be the potentials where we can harness our tourism potentials. But when you look at Lagos, that's the reason why many people go on Third Island. Lagos is very dirty. All those areas are supposed to be re revamped. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, for this very apt motion. I'd like to thank the prime mover for this motion as well. I, while I do agree totally and to what my colleagues have said, I also want to say, sir, that the, it's very imperative that we move, we check our MTEF, the, our medium-term framework. We, we, Lagos State as a, as a state has a development plan. What is the plan towards the development of the waterfront areas as far as tourism, arts, and culture is concerned. Just Cape Town, as a cited example, in a city that, that houses less than 10 million people, has a total of nothing less than 24 million tourist people coming every year. That is huge. It has created over 23,000 jobs. What it says is, in every engine room for development, we must make sure that we develop our small, medium scale um, places. It is very imperative that we call every sector important in this, in, in terms of the um, tourism, arts and culture, in terms of the physical planning, new town development, as Honorable Lowa said, and also, most importantly, the, um, the waterfront um, uh, ministry, to see what exactly they are doing towards achieving this team's objective, which is development, which is employment. He called Bariga, which is a major place, Leki, Marina, Aja, Takwa Bay, all these places need to be developed. I equally want to commend uh, the prime mover for this particular motion. Uh, yes, as uh, one of the honorable members has said rightly, one third of our landscape is on water. Uh, if we take it from the two ends of Lagos State, starting all the way from Badagri to Ekpe, we have huge and vast waterway systems. If we go to places like Dubai, South Africa, Venice, the Maldives, Thailand, Miami, the, the, the amount of tourism that has been, the, what the tourism generates in those places are nothing compared to what we are seeing back home in Lagos here. We talk about tourism and we, emul we like to emulate other countries, we like to emulate other states, but also the issue of security is very key. Without proper security, people would not want to come in to, uh, to, to actually see what you have in terms of tourism. We'll look at it that when we are planning to bring 
tourism very close to our, our state. A lot of infrastructure development will occur. And that will add to the development of the state. So I will be asking and urging my fellow colleagues to support this bill so that we can generate and benefit from tourism. It's a very important one to us in Lagos State, and we must do everything we can to ensure that we take advantage of our potentials in developing a tourism center in Lagos State. As rightly mentioned by one of us, that's most places that we also travel to. They have artificial beach. Artificial, something we have here is so natural that you can see it, you can feel it. All it takes is to develop the potentials to make the place so attractive to bring in people. You know, if you visit most of these um, um, locations, you discover that developments are going on already without regulations, without supervision. And that is what we have to do. And that is what I think this motion is talking about, for the government to take charge and control of this location, this place, so that we can regulate from day one. All we have to do is to ensure security by protecting the tourists and also to ensure that our waterways are free. It is a very good one, and we must emphasize the need for most of these um, MDAs mentioned in this motion to come together, to work together, and for the government to give them support so we can develop uh, these. Here at the Five Carries Terminal in Falomo, the Chairman House Committee on Waterfront and Infrastructure further explains the significance of the motion to the development of the state inland waterways. Uh, it's after I seized the high sea and I plowed the lagoon, I came into a conclusion that the autumn of the country we do go to, to see what is happening in other climes, fundamentally are not better than what we have in Lagos. That's the first, uh, uh, first thing that came to my mind. The other thing is that as highlands are not artificial, they are natural highlands unlike from other climes that created artificial islands and they attract visitors. This tourist attraction is what is generating money for the entire country. Vis-a-vis -vis country like Bahamas, they survive on tourism. Even Cuba, apart from sugar cane, they survive on tourism. Not only that, I was in South Africa by 20, 2010, precisely. I was on the Robin Island. It, apart from South Africa known as the city of gold, what generated money for South Africa is that Robin Island. So virtually in a year, 24 million people go to South Africa to see where Mandela was kept for 24 years. That is the Robin Island. And it's on the Indian Ocean. I also sit in myself. So if Robin Island could be the second highest generating revenue for South Africa, I don't know why we cannot tap into our own natural waterfronts here. Yeah. Yes, I agree that there must be security safety. I agree that uh, we must clear our waterways out of uh, some environmental degradation and, you know, debris and what have you. Yes. But we can sit down and plan on how to move it is going to generate employment. Lagos is blessed with, with, with lagoons and, and, and waterfronts, which stretches almost 210 kilometers along the coastal line. The Atlantic by the right and the lagoons. And I, we have about, about 10 solid lagoons within Lagos geographical contiguity. So invariably, our waterways, if well developed, is sufficient to sustain the economy of not only Lagos, Nigeria in general. So where are you going to take me to? Start? I'm going to take you to Otomu in Ekpe. I'm going to take you to Ilashe. I'm going to take you to Ibeche. I'm going to take you to Ekpe Lagoon. We plow the lagoon, we plow the seas. 
you come back with yourself a big cargo of complete satisfaction. I'm taking you around the lagoon of Lagos from Falovan to Ibeche to Ilache. We proceed back to Ijede in Korodu to Ekwe in Tomu. So you to Oshun in Ekwe and eventually we will be coming back with a big cargo of complete satisfaction. I've tour our natural waterways. It's a natural therapy that uh, ordinarily we look for outside the country, of course, which we have here. But it's because we have not developed it. That is the essence of that the motion I moved uh, precisely 30th of uh, December last year, uh, that we should develop our waterways, especially the waterfront. These are things that affect other countries, huge millions of dollars. The coastal, uh, coastal lagoon, length of Lagos is 210 kilometers. You, you see how massive that is. We have the Atlantic by the left and the lagoon by the right. It's easier for us to move from here to Ekwe instead of going through the route of the Lekki, Bejuleki Express, Express Road. The waterway is sufficient for us to tap into. You can see the boat are moving both left and right, going to a different destination. Lagos is blessed. It's not by accident that uh, Lagos is two meters below sea level. And I will encourage the government, the federal government, to also be part of the global sea level observing system so that we can maximize the benefits and the communal integration within the international community. Now, I also like to talk about waterway security. How safe you know, is Lagos waterways? How well, safe is it? Well, it is true that there is virtually insecurity in the country. All we need to do is to beef up our security. It's safe. It's safe. And the important thing, the important thing that I will also call your attention to is that when we develop our waterways, we create employment. Those who are creating news and see that through robbery and other means, we also secure, we also secure employment. So it reduces so, so everything works symbiotically. The lawmaker is convinced that the inland waterways, if fully harnessed, will not only boost the revenue of the state, but would also help minimize road traffic congestion, pollution, and provide low-cost means of long-distance travel within the city. Now, Lagos is set to own two more universities, bringing the number of universities in the state to three. Meanwhile, one of the bills expected to bring that dream to reality was stepped down on the floor of the House to allow for further legislative tinkering. Chairman House Committee on Tertiary Education provides more insight into this. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon. Second allotted day for the report of the Committee on Education, Tertiary Institutions on a bill for a law after months of deliberations on the bills to establish two more universities in Lagos, one of the bills killed third reading and was passed by the lawmakers on the 29th of December 2021. All in favor say aye. Those against nay, the eyes have it. Subsequently, the bill for a law to provide for the establishment of the University of Science and Technology was forwarded to the governor for his assent. As stated in the bill, the plan was to upgrade the Lagos State Polytechnic Ikorudu to the University of Science and Technology, while the two state-owned colleges of education, Adeniro Ogunsoya College of Education, Otto Ijaniki and Michael Otedola College of Primary Education, Nofurija Ikme would be upgraded to universities of education. Olabi Ajani is a chairman house committee on tertiary institutions. He spoke further on the intent of the bill and how the institutions are expected to run. Education has always been a real uh, strength in Lagos State. Um, 
We, we recently heard figures, I think uh, Lasso was the third best school in Africa or something like that. So it's, it's, all this is fantastic for Lagos State. So we, we envisage a state where we would have more institutions, we would be able to train more of our students, especially the indigents of Lagos State. We're having issues where uh, Lagos State uh, indigents are traveling to other states, or other parts of the world and struggling to be educated, where we have the ability and the facilities to educate our own children. Why not do it? So that is the real the real premise or the real uh, uh, what the governor was really looking for at the initiation of the bill is for it's for it to to help educate the children as much as possible. So Lagos State wants to have two new universities. Uh, we have uh, La Sued, which is the University of Education, and we also have uh, La Sustec, which is the University of Science and Technology. So that with uh, the substantive Lasu will now bring the institutions in Lagos State to three. So the University of Lagos will have an annex, which, is, which will be uh, formerly, or still currently Mokoped, but it will be an annex that will be joining on to Adeni Rogusoya uh, College of Education as well, to make the University of Education. Um, the School for Science and Technology is something that's very, very passionate to me and also the School of Education, mind you. I used to be a teacher myself, so I understand the premise of having to educate our teachers. But what we have found is education has moved progressively over the past 50 years and our education systems in Africa seem to have stagnated. So what, uh, what we're really trying to do with this bill is bring in a new progressive way of education. There's a lot of um, short courses that will be allowed now. Uh, previously, as a college of education, there's limitations to the types of courses that they can actually certify. But now as a university, once they, uh, once they meet all the accreditation parameters, once they can be accredited as a full-fledged university, there are certain courses they will then be able to teach. There will be certain courses they will be able to develop and structure. And once they can get the approval from the, the National Universities Council, it's absolutely fine. They have a course that they can actually certify as a university rather than just a college of education or a college. So last word would be, we, we hope for it to be, or we pray for it to be the, we call it, we'll say the apex education institute in the state, or institution in the state. And we hope that it will continue to develop the education of the educators. The, you have to understand that, yes, we say uh, the children are the future, we have to teach the children, but those who are teaching the children as well, can always come back and upgrade their skills. Those who wish to enter the profession can come and learn how to be teachers. So the good thing about universities is they have departments and departments can teach a varied myriad of subjects. And I believe in the University of Education, we currently have six different departments that span things like media, things like uh, um, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, programming, technological development, uh, mechanical development. So yes, it would be teaching teachers, but teaching teachers to teach the next generation of those that will learn. So it's, it's a fantastic opportunity for the states and fantastic for Nigeria as a whole because not just Nigeria would benefit, or not just Lake Goshians would benefit, but I believe any and every African child that wishes to expand their knowledge will now have two new institutions to pick from in the states. Rome wasn't built in a day. And these institutions, they require a good uh, structure. The good thing about both institutions is they're well structured already. And we have a lasso as well as a, a reflection to show us how to do things when we're going into these institutions. So I expect that if we look at the success of an institution like LASU being the third best in Africa, generally then I think we should expect greater things from these two new institutions that would hopefully have even worked out the kinks and the problems that perhaps we may or may not have faced with the LASU institution.
They say you learn something new every day. Uh, I was an educator for over six years myself as a teacher, but going into the nitty gritties of the law that makes an institution, I had no idea. I have a newfound appreciation for the work I did in the past and for the work that my superiors did as the people who ran these institutions. It's an incredibly difficult job, incredibly thankless from their part. And I believe um, those that are involved in Lagos State's education system at the moment, uh, the SA on education, fantastic person, very, very passionate uh, Honorable uh, Tokubo, I have very, very passionate about these bills, very passionate about education in the States. I think these people, he and his team, they are really looking to do wonderful things for us. And I think we should be expecting great things from Lagos State moving forward. This is the Lagos State Polytechnic, Ikurudu, by the bill passed into law. The institution is expected to take on the name, the University of Science and Technology. Our visits to the institution gave us the opportunity to feel the pulse of the head of the school on the upgrade that would soon take place here. Oluremi Nuruddin Olaleye is a school rector. He commended the lawmakers for the thorough work done on the bills. It's one of the best things that has happened to the history of education in Lagos State. I mean, say in Nigeria. And I tell you why. Look at cities all over the world with similar populations. London, Tokyo, Bombay, and tell us the number of universities that they have. So if we want education, if we want to advance in literacy, there is no shortcut to having many universities. Lagos State, the three universities we have currently, I tell you, may not even be enough for the population of 20 million. Add other universities and tertiary institutions, not enough. If we want an educated population, a literate population, a civil and civilized population. So I think it's, it's, it's one of the best achievements of education in recent times. From the beginning, we have been issued this Lagos State Polytechnic itself had always nursed the ambition to, to become a university. We have set up se several committees in the past that did not see the light of the day. So when the government, Baba, Mr. Babaji De Olushola Sonwolu administration came up with the idea to transform Lagos State Polytechnic to a university, we had no option than to jump into the mission and we are part of it to date. It's, it's, uh, it gave me the experience, the opportunity to see how the laws are made. I have been part of um, civil societies that wrote how our laws are made. But you know, that experience gave me, it gave me a, an opportunity to experience it personally. We, we had several meetings, meetings with large number, meetings with smaller numbers, retreats to ensure that we dot the eyes and we crossed the T's before the, the bill was. We had public, public um, session. We looked at it. As, as the laws were passed from it one stage to the other, we were part of it. Audio I, I thank them. I thank Mr. Speaker, Right Honorable Mudashi Obasa for a, a job well done. I thank um, the Chairman House Committee on Education. So will I be and I thank him so much for to have put a lot of they put in the effort as if they were all educationists, you know. When you see professors, provosts, rectors, vice chancellors meeting together to discuss issues thoroughly, you know, we couldn't have anything less than that. With the growing number of prospective undergraduates in the state, the state government is confident that the creation of the two additional degree awarding institutions would bridge this gap. Away from that story, the Lagos State House of Assembly has warned police officers against harassment, intimidation and extortion of residents if they want to be respected.
Speaker of the House said this during a thank you visit made by the outgoing Commissioner of Police, Akim Udumosu, who was recently promoted to the rank of Assistant Inspector General of Police and due for retirement in January 2022. Commissioner of Police, who is a visitor to the House, I wish to move that Order 129 of the rules be activated as we move. The day's plenary kicked off with House Rule Number 129 suspended to allow visitors participate in the deliberations. Mr. Hakim Udumosu has just been appointed as the Assistant Inspector General of Police led other team of officers into the chamber. He has been considered by the House to have effectively managed the security of the state while in office. He is the first Commissioner of Police to stand before the lawmakers in the hallowed chambers to address the state on issues relating to policing Lagos. With the law, as the disposal of law enforcement officers, agents, which this house has passed out so many, then the Lagos has made to be peaceful. So I want to further implore the house that don't get tired, don't relent. Mr. Odumosu wasted no time to commend the legislature for its proactiveness shown through the laws passed by the House, which is largely responsible for the peace and tranquility recorded in the state. You are stepping out. It is important to also call on those coming behind you that the relationship between the people and the police institution has to be improved upon. It is very important because you must build confidence in the people that you are working for. We have seen so many things. Everybody must be treated with respect and honor. And that is the only way we can also earn such respect. So yeah, you have done your bit and we are appreciating what you have done. But this is an opportunity for us to call on those coming. The person that will take charge after you and those that will be working with him or her, that it is very important that we create very cordial, very smooth relationship with the people. And that's it on Lagos Parliament this week. We thank you for watching. Do send us feedback to Lagos Parliament at tvcnews.tv. I am Abimbola Agbibi. Goodbye.